first uh, movie of the new year was Ridley Scott's American Gangster. Uh, as I think I, well, if you read my blog, I am uh, finally going to finish Denzel's filmography this year. So I have seen 28. I had 19 left. Now I've seen 29. I have 18 left. So I'm getting there. Um, I'm actually doing a troll feature today. So the first one, I wanted to just get this out of the way because I've been trying to not watch this movie for uh, 10 years. And so now I've watched it and I can say I've seen it. And that is Ridley Scott's American Gangster. Um, I knew I wasn't going to like this movie. It's okay. Like, okay. Any movie that has Denzel and Chiwetel Ejiofor and Cuba Gooding Jr. and Armando Sante and John Hawks and RZA, 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 and uh, Ruby D all in one movie, you'd think I'd be like, yay! And yay for those individuals. They're great. But the film is like, it's three hours long. It's apparently wildly inaccurate. Uh, it added an entire subplot to the Russell Crowe character about like um, uh, like child custody when the character, the real character never even had a kid. And, and like that was like 40 minutes of the movie that, I, that didn't need to be there. And it didn't really feel like it had a point of view on either of these characters. Um, I was reading about the real guy that it's based on and like apparently um, – his son created a resource for uh, the children of um, uh, American prisoners. And, like, that's a really fascinating story, right? Because children don't ask to be the kids of, you know, criminals, right? Um, they don't even mention that this guy has children. So they made fake kids for the Russell Crowe character and didn't actually have the other guy's kids. Now maybe the kids, you know, they're still alive. Everyone's still alive. Maybe the kids didn't want to be in the film, but that just seems like a much more interesting negotiation. Apparently the original script that still Steve Zillian wrote was 170 pages. Who, do you think you are James Joyce? Like, no. And so you have three hours and there's no point of view. There's no um, consideration of the women in his lives. Like, they're there. Her, there's his wife and his mother and Ruby Dee's great as the mother for the, like, 10 minutes out of three hours that they give her but like I'm just I'm just sick of movies that don't like I'm starting the new year already in like I'm just sick of fucking movies that are historical and ignore the ramifications of the behavior of men on the women in their lives like I don't give a shit unless you tell me what this meant to her what what did it mean to be the his wife did she know that he was a gangster and was okay with it did she have issues the mom says she didn't ask questions because she didn't want to get lied to, but, like, I'm sure she had way more to say than that. It's just, and then there's all the um, women that are processing the heroin, and they're naked, and there's, like, a runaway joke about, uh, or, like, a throwaway line about how they're all naked so they can't steal from him. If that's a real thing that happened, which sounds like it probably could have been, let's talk about that. There's also, like, this guy was, there's a couple of lines about how, because he was black and went around the Italian mob, that this guy was um, an entrepreneur and like a new face in progress in America where uh, a black person could build up such a huge criminal empire, but they don't really talk about race relations at all. You have a fucking three hour movie about this person who clearly followed the build our own businesses uh, model of, of post-civil rights era. And you don't talk about that at all all like are what the fuck you can tell this movie was developed by a bunch of fucking white people who have no clue about the history of race relations at this time or if they do didn't care enough to put it in the fucking movie and so the story they're telling has it just I just kept going and why like why is this interesting and they made everything up so it's like you actually probably had an interesting story that you could have told and instead you just fucking made everything up are you kidding me? And then this movie made like a bajillion dollars. And I'm just like, Argh! made me really angry. Um, that said, the Jay-Z album that it inspired is a really great album. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, Denzel's good in it. Like, he's always good. But it's just a, such a waste of three hours of my life. 
So that's why I've waged it. I haven't seen this movie because I knew I was going to not like it and I'd read all this stuff and um, just watching it now and realizing that there's just, like, there's a reason, like, some histories should not be told by a bunch of white people. And here is, this is just a great example, I think, of um, why white people should not jump jump into certain histories unless they're actually going to invest time into looking at the society at that time like the, what is the what I mean what is the point <sighs> other than to just show a bunch of people getting shot and like try to make a 70s uh police film all over again I don't like 70s movies so the fact that it's set in the 70s and they made it feel like a 70s movie also made me not really care. Um, I feel like I had one more thing I wanted to say about this movie and I can't remember what it was. Uh, Chewedle said that. I don't know. It's just ugh is what I have to say. So anyways, this is Ridley Scott's American Gangster. It's got a lot not going for it and... I'm going to say it's for completists only. Um, I've got two more Denzel movies I'm going to be watching tonight, so I look forward to reviews of those later. And, uh, yeah, you've probably are all seen this movie already because this is a movie lots of people have seen and I've just been slacking on. So 2007's American Gangster starring Russell Crowe, Denzel Washington, directed by Ridley Scott. Not a big fan. <laughs>